Hello everyone and welcome. Today I'll be showing you guys a couple of samples of gold ore that I got from a couple of gold mines, as well as a couple of pictures of the mines themselves. I also have a couple other pictures of another type of metal that you'll get to see as well. So it was in the second or third week of my college semester when I was invited to go on this trip to these gold mines. Now this is not a trip meant for students. This is a trip where a whole bunch of geologists and geologist instructors and people that are really interested in the subject get together and they go on these trips. Since I showed a knowledge of the subject already, I was invited to go with. I got to meet a lot of great geologists and some famous ones as well in the field. I also got to meet some of the ones that made the geologic maps that I use almost every day. So we all drove into the mountains and met at a designated location to start our day. So to begin our day, they took us into an old building that was basically serving as a warehouse facility for one of the mines where they were storing core samples. And the first one here is this one, and the host rock is mainly slightly metamorphosed sedimentary rock. And you can see there's some stringer veins of little quartz, and if you look at the top of this, you can see that silvery looking mineral up top, and that is galena. Now, in that galena is where the mines have been recovering most of their silver and lead. Other places, it's mainly lead they're getting out of that galena, and others, it's mainly silver. And in some mines, it's pretty evened up. Here's a look at a couple more samples. You can see there's some little stringer veins of quartz, and one of them to the right there has a pocket with terminating quartz crystals, which was interesting to look at. One of the other things they had, which I couldn't take a picture of, was a sample underneath a microscope showing a small speck of gold that was visible. Out of all the core samples they had, this one was the most interesting, and you can probably already tell why. That is native copper. Now this core sample came from about 47 meters below the surface. And finally here is the last core sample picture I have, and again this is copper, but this time it is oxidized copper, so that is why it is green instead of that brilliant shiny copper look we're all used to. Uh, this was also a pretty interesting sample, but not of course uh, as interesting as the native copper. So eventually we finished looking at all the core samples and we drove up to one of the mines we were going to check out. So here is the first mine and it is located on the top side portion of a mountain and what they did was basically create a huge gash as they mined out the material. And most of the mines in this area are mainly after lead and silver and usually gold is a byproduct. And here their main product is gold. So looking at this picture, you can probably see all the orange colored looking rock along with a lot of black and darker spots. Now it might be difficult for some of you to see this, but there is actually a fault line that is almost dead center of the picture. This fault is a thrust fault, and again, it's kind of difficult to spot. I had a hard time spotting it while I was there, but if you notice that black looking rock, there's kind of a line of it almost center of the picture and that is the fault. Along this fault are several quartz veins uh, that are related to this fault and because every time their fault moves during an earthquake it creates fractures in the rock which get filled up with hot fluids which then deposit silica which is quartz and other uh, anything else that is in the solution also gets deposited and in this case there's lots of gold to be found in this mine. Now there are many veins in this mine, but there are three main veins that they are doing most of their production on where they're getting most of their gold ore. One of the veins has undergone considerable gouge and shearing from the fault zone, so the thrust fault. And that fault gouge can actually be seen in this picture, and that's what most of that black material is. Now here are the samples that I collected from the mine here. You can see it's very large white quartz here, very massive stuff. Now the gold in this quartz vein material is actually very sporadic. So there's some places where they'll be mining and they'll recover about maybe an ounce worth of gold per ton. And then sometimes they'll get into a really rich pocket vein of quartz and they'll be getting about 30 to 40 ounces of gold per ton. Now these two samples I have here, you can obviously tell they're different and these are actually from two separate veins that they're mining at the mine. So the first samples I'm going to show here are the bluish gray quartz from the black gold vein. This quartz has those little black lines which are little gouge seams and they run parallel to the trend of the shearing. 
that black gouge is mostly made up of many sulfides and you can actually see there are some pyrites in this sample. Here are a couple of close-up images I tried to get of the pyrites within the quartz and the gouge. You can probably maybe see some small cubes of pyrite. Some of the surfaces on this vein material have begun to oxidize and here is a picture of one of them and if you can see there's a bit of a rainbow effect on the oxidation on this uh, quartz chunk here. Now there's a couple different things that could be causing that rainbow effect but I'm not sure which one it is. But it is very pretty. Which brings me to the next sample here. This is the largest sample that I took by far and I believe it comes from the more massive white quartz vein. What's cool about this vein material is the small amount of crystals, uh, quartz crystals, that have begun to form in the vein. Similar to that other quartz sample with the oxidation, these crystals, when shined in the correct lighting, cast off uh, a rainbow effect off the surface. So eventually I'll be taking these samples and I'll be crushing them up to see how much gold is actually in here when I get the chance. Of course, I'll save the samples that have the crystals on them. Before we move on to the next mine, here's a close look at the fault gouge rock. This is from the crushed rock in the fault. It is loaded with sulfides, and you can actually smell the sulfur in this sample. And it's also very fragile and crumbles really easily. Alright, so here's the picture looking up at the next mine, which was actually located just on the other side of the valley, and a little off to the right of the fault line. Even though these mines are pretty close to each other, and they're mining off the same geologic feature, the ore material looks much different. If you look about center of this picture, you can see there's some darker looking rock, and you can see where some of it's rolled down slope a little bit. That darker rock is altered material from hydrothermal activity, and that is where the deposits are. So I happened to be following a guy once we got up into this mine, and he had a metal detector wand pinpointer. And he went up to this boulder here, and the detector went off like crazy. As soon as this happened, he got out his hammer and began hitting at the rock, but the rock was way too hard and nothing happened, so he gave up on it. But the ore material here was absolutely loaded with sulfides and magmatite. There were also little micro faults in the rock, and you can see a picture of one here. You can see the bedding planes in the sedimentary rock have been offset just slightly. This was our last stop of the day, and then shortly after, we left the mine, and that was the end of our trip. I learned a lot of information from this trip, and I got to meet a lot of geologists and other people that are well-informed in geology, and they had lots of information and wisdom to share. And I thank them all for inviting me on this trip, and with that being said, I hope you guys all enjoyed this video. I know it's nothing too exciting, but I thought I'd just share this information with you guys. And I know some of you will appreciate it, and maybe some of you learned something new from it. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know down below, and I'll see you all next time.